Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everybody. Get 100 has returned. Your loyal captain is back once again. And guys, it is time to end this once and for all. The Kanto series is finally coming to a close. All right, and once you guys are watching this video, I want you guys to go to my community post right now and answer. Once again, should I go to Johto? Yes or no? And that will determine whether I continue this series or not. The Poke this Pokemon series of What If Ash Was Red Sun can stop and die right at the Kanto mark after Ash completes his Kanto journey. Or we can continue on to the World Championship like I originally planned. And I promise you guys there will be regular uploads. There will be regular uploads of stuff like this. I promise you that. <sighs> but we need to finish the Kanto series first. So let's get it done right now. Anyway. We pick up our story exactly where, you le where we left off. Ash had defeated Gary in the finals for the last time. Well, not for the last time. Because we'll see him again very soon if you guys want another series. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm making a playlist of this right, uh, of this right now. So hopefully by the time this is out, there will be a playlist of What If Ash Was Red Sun, the Kanto series. And because this, this is the Kanto series finale. So that way you guys can watch part one all the way up to the up to this date. So that way you guys won't be mixed up by how uh you know how many parts there are. This is like part nine right now. But I promise you, regular uploads uh for this series if you guys want a part two. Also, I gotta get get to work on other videos, by the way. Anyway, Ash had just defeated Gary, and Gary cried to Blue, but Blue said he was proud of him anyway, and that it was fine. The world is vast. And there's a lot more that Blue hasn't explored yet. And Gary, um, after the, after the, you know, f after Ash getting his trophy and winning, he, Ash finally earned the right to challenge the Elite Four. And that's exactly what he was going to do. Gary had, in, had shook Ash's hand and said that th even though he lost to Ash, he's going to keep training. Their journey isn't over yet. But as Ash's rival and their four best friend... He's going to continue to see this tour to the end. And Ash better not lose to anyone except for him. And Ash just laughed at that and says, you got it. So, it's time for the Elite Four Challenge. <sighs> it took Ash uh, three days to, to prep his Pokemon. Because that's how much time they gave him. <sighs> but when he came back, y'all, it's time to get it going. I'm going to change the picture. And, and I'm going to get Ash's team ready for what's to come. So... With that being said, let's change this up. See you guys in a second. All right, guys, we're back. Here she comes. The first bout of Ash's Elite Four Challenge, Lorelei, the ice <laughs> type user. Lorelei said it's been a while since anyone has actually, uh, well, been able to challenge the Pokemon League. A good, like, two years, in fact. <laughs> But still, um, the people that do get past her <laughs> normally normally don't get past the next two that's after her. And keep in mind, she's only the start because she's classified as the weakest of the Elite Four, in quote. But don't think of ice as something to easily be smashed. It can be as sturdy as rocks or as, as bulky as a wall. <laughs> but Ash just says he's ready for whatever challenge Lorelai has to throw at him. Oh, really? As she holds up a Pokeball. Then let us quit with the pretenses and begin. As now, the announcer would yell to, to begin the Pokemon battle. And both Pokemon would throw out their Pokemon. As Ash has heard, um... Has, he's heard of their battles and he, and he saw, saw their battles on, record, on recorded uh, live events when they do fight. So he knows exactly what the strategy would go for. As he would grab a Pokeball and immediately throw out his Raichu. Right, you. I choose you. And Lorelai would start with the classic you know who. Slow bro. Immediately when they both threw out their Pokemon, Lorelai was intrigued because, wow. She expected Ash to literally throw out a fire type off rip. Not exactly an electric type. Hold on a sec, guys. Sorry about that, I just need to take another sip of water. And Ash would instead just say that 
He watched Lorelai's battles on, reco on recorded live streams, videos, and any other information he could get on the other Elite Four. Now, even though it was a hassle to get, yeah, he, he came up with a counter to Lorelai's team. It may not be perfect, but he knows there's a way to get around her. Oh, really? Well, let's see it then. As the battle begins, as Slowbore would immediately start the battle by using a Hydro Pump. Thankfully, Raichu is a lot qu is a lot quicker than Slowbro, and immediately Ash calls for a Thunder. Yeah, no Thunderbolt this time, just straight off Thunder. And Raichu would actually land the Thunder directly on Slowbro. But the thing is, Slowbro can somewhat tank it because it is a sp it is a special it's a Spadef tank, not really a well you know it's a tank in both. Uh, the, it's defenses. Special defense and regular defense. So it's actually very hard to take down the slow bro. So Ash knew that would be happening, but he has a gamble right now. He just has to hope that it works. So, okay, immediately that will kind of fail. As this time, Lorelai would immediately call for a reflect. Oh, no. Wait, reflect? Why not light screen? And then she would call for the light screen. Oh, Jesus. Now this is going to be a lot harder than usual. Yeah. Lorelai is a, is a master in what she does. Then immediately Lorelai calls for an ice beam on the, sta on the stadium to make uh, Raichu lose its footing. But hey, Ash is not done yet. He calls for uh, Raichu to use Iron Tail. And right as Raichu does, it hits Slowbro. But Slowbro is like tanking the damage. Now when this now this time when Lorelai calls for a hydro pump, it hits Raichu. Oh, that's not good. But it's fine though. Oh jeez, man. Okay, this is uh this is kind of complicated for Ash. He doesn't know what exactly what to do beyond this point. Okay, he still has two moves left. He doesn't want to risk losing losing one and not and not getting the KO. Because he doesn't know if Raichu can uh, outlast Slowbro and Stamina. Wait, that's it! So immediately. Okay, this is going to be very tough, but Ash has Raichu go in and use Brick Break multiple times. Wait, oh yeah, Brick Break. Why didn't I think of that before? So Ash basically just smiles, and he forgot what Brick Break could actually do. So when he tells Raichu to run in for it and use Brick Break, Raichu karate chops uh, Slowbro directly on the head, immediately stopping the light screen and the reflex. And Ash would say, now Raichu, use Thunder immediately. And Raichu would immediately use call upon a thundercloud and shock lightning directly upon Slowbro. But Lorelai, seeing how bad this is, would tell Slowbro to immediately uh, use Hydro Pump to push it back. And the two attacks collide. But when, wa when electricity meets water, uh-oh, it goes everywhere. So the, li so the lightning strike would follow, right, would follow the Hydro Pump back to Slowbro and shock it inside of its mouth, hitting for a very bad direct hit and critical hit, causing a paralysis and causing Slowbro to be knocked out. Lorelai would recall Slowbro, saying that what Ash did was, at, was very impressive. She wasn't expecting that. But she tells Ash not to get cocky because her next team member is, uh, oh boys, where things get, start to get serious now. And Ash is ready for it. As immediately she would throw out, let's go, Jinx, and whoop, here we go. As Jinx hits the battlefield, Ash is right, she was kind of winded because, well, who boy, it took a lot. Slowbro and Ash had to do a lot of damage to that Slowbro, because, like I said, Slowbro is like a physical and special tank when it comes to it. It may not be, Ash would know because he has a Slowbro, so. He knows exactly how much damage they can dish out if you really put them to their full potential. But that's not the point right now. Here we, Ash has something else that has to do with another Pokemon. Jinx. Now, all around, Jinx is not, is not really that hard to deal with. But dang, he knows what kind of moves Jinx can pull out. So, the battle would begin as, Jinx, as Lorelai will immediately tell Jinx to use Psychic. And pretty much it's like a Sans battle. Jinx is literally throwing Raichu all around the, uh, oh man, all around the entire battlefield until it's like getting knocked out. But Ash won't give up. He tells Raichu to use Thunder because that's the only move Ash can use from afar without Jinx kind of stopping him. 
So Raichu would use Thunder, and actually it would, sadly, it would miss the, the attack. Because it's kind of, uh, has a concussion, and its vision is blurry from all the, um, you know, hitting the ground and the walls. But Ash would call to Raichu to not give up. And Raichu, and when Jinx would drop Raichu, Raichu would barely stand up, barely be hanging on. As now, this time, Lorelai will be calling for a blizzard. And this will be the moment. Ash would say, what, would tell Raichu to wait for it. And immediately when Raichu is standing there, Jinx would shoot the blizzard. And Ash would tell Raichu to, to, now, to now do it. Raichu would roll out of the way, rush up to Jinx. Ash would, would yell for a brick break. And immediately, once that happens, bam, brick break directly on the top of the head. But Ash would tell, uh, would tell Raichu to not give up and use Iron Tail immediately. Raichu's long tail would come from behind it and would turn into steel and boom, hit Jinx directly on the head once again. Now, Jinx is fragile. And with Raichu's good attack, it did a very good damage, but it wasn't enough to capitalize on it because now... Ash was in direct range of Blizzard, and using Blizzard right away was what had was what uh, was necessary to put Raichu down. Ash would would recall Raichu, telling it that he did a good job. You did amazing, buddy. Leave the rest up to us. Okay, Ash thought to himself for a moment here, because he knows what's gonna come up next after this Jinx. They're gonna it's gonna be the heavy hitters. Ugh. And well, he can't. He doesn't really want to risk throwing out a heavy, throwing throwing out his uh, ultimate defense right now. But he's ready for it. All right, let's do this. So Ash will hold back a Pokeball and throw out his next Pokemon, Flareon. I choose you. As Ash, as Ash's Fire EV evolution would hit the ground, and Lorelai will be actually be stunned because well, it's an evolution for one and two. Uh, it, it's the fire one. Is Ash sure he knows what he's doing? Considering the next Pokemon that comes up are going to be even more difficult. Ash says he knows what's coming up is going to be a lot more difficult than usual. But he's ready for it. And he, could, and he couldn't really risk throwing out any more of his other uh, heavy Pokemon. Considering the fact that they're kind of in the same position as Flareon. But he's optimistic about this. He knows Flareon can win this. Oh really? Then let's see it. As, as immediately, Lorelai would call for Jinx to use a, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah. Would call for a Water Pulse. But, uh, Ash's Flareon is much faster than you think. Ash would you tell Flareon to use Quick Attack to dodge. And immediately, Flareon would start blitzing the battlefield. Running around and around and around. And right at, right when, uh, Ash thinks it's necessary, he would tell Flareon to immediately use Fire Blast. And Flareon would stop and shoot Fire Blast directly at Jinx. Lorelai would say use would tell uh, Jinx to use Psychic to stop the fire, and Jinx would. But this is what Ash was gambling on because he would he would call for a Flare Blitz and rush directly at the fire that Jinx was holding. And immediately when Jinx was holding the flames, Flareon had ran into the flames that Jinx was holding, causing even more fire to come to come at Jinx. And sadly, with the amount of power coming at Jinx, it's not able to hold it all back. As Jinx, Jinx gets hit with the flare blitz, well, with the fire with the fire flare blitz, the fire flare. Yeah, I, I like I like that. The fire the fire flare. Oof! And immediately after the uh, the flames is settled, and after uh, Flareon taking some damage, recoil damage, Jinx has been knocked out by that. Now that was impressive. Uh, using the flames to bl to blind J Ash uh, to blind Jinx and immediately capitalize on damage, very smart on Ash's part. Now, obviously, in the Elite Four, she you can they only have five Pokemon. I would have given her a six member, but honestly, I just really didn't feel like doing it because there aren't really that ma that many Ice types in Kanto. I know I could have went with the Let's Go Rematch team in Kanto, but um, we haven't gotten to a Lola just yet. And I, uh, I don't really want to do that as of right now. I was thinking about it, y'all, but I don't want to. You know what? You know what? Screw it. Screw it. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care. So let me go get a certain uh, Pokemon after, the, after this one. Because, like I said, it's going to be the, the, the harder hitters from now on.
because all Elite Four members have six Pokemon too. Uh, I'm just I'm just saying screw it. Let's let's go. So Lorelai said that Ash is good, but here but now uh, this is gonna be her, this is gonna be her last easy hitter type of Pokemon before because after this she's only gonna hit Ash hard from now on. All right. So as she winds back her Pokeball and throws out her next Pokemon, Cloyster, let's be ready. As Cloyster would hit the battlefield. Let me tell you guys something a secret about Cloyster. He has, Cloyster has my favorite Pokemon, Cry. Cloyster is not my favorite Pokemon, but he's my favorite Pokemon, Cry. I swear, I just love it. I really do love Cloyster's Pokemon, Cry. It's just really, really good. It's just really, really good in, in my opinion. I know it may be a weird thing to love about a Pokemon, but I just love it when you hear a Cloyster cry. It's just really nice. Well, yeah. Alright, anyway, with that being said, Cloyster has hit the battlefield. O obviously, the Elite Four members doesn't have shiny Pokemon. I'm just using the Pokemon that I have based off of Ash's boxes to make it easier on myself, because I don't really want to get their whole god dang teams, but I'm going to have to for, like, you know, the next uh, Elite Four members, because this is going to be a lot harder on me. Oh, man. All right, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so with that being said, Cloyster would hit the battlefield, and Ash would immediately know that Cloyster is an ice and water type. So his fire moves are only going to be regular effective. So as of right now, he and do the Flareon already using a, a very a damaging move in Flare Blitz? Now, keep in mind, Flare Flareon is still fresh out the Pokeball, so it's not as winded, but Flareon did suffer some damage. So with that being said, uh, on Ash's better judgment, he would recall Flareon. He, he would bring Flareon back to save it for later, knowing that, though, that what's coming up next is not going to be very easy. Okay, so, and then Lorelai called Ash smart, savoring a Pokemon he knows that is going to be useful for later. Because Ash has certain moves on Flareon that he could use uh, against Cloyster, but against that hard shell, it's going to make things very difficult. So, heck, he might as well capitalize on this Pokemon while he has the chance. Primate, I choose you! As Primate would hit the battlefield, it's raring for this fight. It is ready to go. Lorelai would be shocked. She would say, impressive. When some She heard that Ash had caught a lot of Pokemon just like his father. And usually, lots of Pokemon in the boxes or at the ranch would get lazy. But your Pokemon are in tip-top shape. And Ash would say, that's because we're always re ready to go. Especially ones like Primeape here. Isn't that right? As Primeape would snort uh, and basically steam would come out of its nose. As it's ready to do this. As Ash would tell, would tell Primeape to get, ready, to get ready. Because we're about to go on the offensive. And basically... Uh, Lorelai would just say, Cloyster, here they come, as Cloyster would get ready for its defense. As immediately, she would start calling for withdraws and iron, def and iron defenses. But Ash already knows to be prepared for that. As he told Primate to use bulk up after bulk up. If she's going to increase her defense, we're going to, uh, we're going to increase our attack. So Primate is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Its attack is reaching its maximum. So this, uh, so this battle is going to be absolutely nuts. So once they're done powering their Pokemon up, Lorelai would immediately call for Cloyster to use, uh, ooh, to use Hydro Pump. But immediately, since Primeape is so fat, it's really fast, and I mean extremely fast, it would dodge it and rush up to Cloyster with almost unrealistic speed for a, for a bulky Pokemon like Primeape. And Ash would immediately call for a Thunder Punch. Primeape would wind back its fist, and Lorelai would yell immediately, immediately to Cloyster to close its shell. But before it can, Primeape would get off a clean, like a clean and mean right right hook directly <clears throat> into Cloyster's like face and its core, hitting Cloyster for massive damage. And I mean that was nuts. And and right then and there, Cloyster would be paralyzed due to the overwhelming power, and it would be hurt really badly. Oh no, Cloyster! And immediately, Ash would call for its next move, Drain Punch. Yeah, Ash, Ash's primate, primate knows Drain Punch. And keep in mind, those were only its first two moves. So Ash would, uh, Ash's Primate would run up to Cloyster and punch it again, uppercutting it this time with its left hand, and draining Cloyster of its energy, knocking it clean out. 
Now that was a was a very intense battle. Lorelai would say even though she capitalized on raising Cloyster's defense, Ash had um used that used that to his advantage by making Primeape even stronger and faster by using bulk up. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, guys, Ash has bulk up, drain punch, and thunder punch. Ash has one more move in his back pocket, but he's saving but he's saving that until he needs it. Hopefully he doesn't have to use it, but hey, it's it's all good to have it. So, Lorelai would uh, uh take out our next Pokeball and said, from now on, things are about to get even rougher, because now she's st she's gonna stop playing from here. Well, not like she's been playing before. She was she was being very serious, but she she was using all of her strategies to to its fullest. But she can see from Ashes and his Pokemon eyes that she, he is just like Red, so. She's going to battle him with utmost seriousness and strategy now. As her ice will become piercing cold. As she would throw out her next Pokemon. Dugong. Let's go. So, with this being said, this is this here is going to actually be very, very good. Alright, here we go. As Ash is ready for it, and immediately Dugong uh, would, sh would shoot off an ice beam. But with Primate being as fast as it was before, Ash would immediately t tell it to use Thunder Punch once more. Hitting Dugong for a actually very cr very crazy amount of damage. Because Ash has a Dugong himself, remember? Ash is, has pretty much completed the Pokedex at this point. He's already done that. So, he knows every single strength and weaknesses about a, about a Pokemon, all Pokemon in Kanto. So, um, yeah, this, is, this stuff here, pretty much light work to him. And he knows that Dugong's Physical, def wait, physical defense is pretty much paper. So Ash would just keep telling Primate to use Thunder Punches left and right. And immediately, uh, knowing Lorelai has to get some damage off, she would immediately call for a Hydra Pump directly in Primate's face. And that only made Primate get angrier and Drain Punch it uh, and, and knock it out again. Wow. Strong. Very strong. As Lorelai would be happy about this, but, oh boy. Her next Pokemon here is going to immensely turn the tides of this battle. As she's, even though she's the weakest Elite Four, she's still an Elite Four member. Never forget that. As she winds back her next Pokeball and throws it out. Ninetales, let's, I choose you. Ninetales, but that's a fire type, right? Wrong. As the Alolan Ninetales would hit the battlefield, Ash will be stunned. What? He, I never seen that nine tails before. As he picks up its po his Pokedex, but it's unknown data. Unknown. Ash has caught 151 Pokemon in the can in the Pokedex. How? As Lorelai would tell him, the world is vast. There are other regions besides Kanto, and this nine tails is proof. And immediately, Ash tells Primeape to be on guard because they don't know what kind of moves this Pokemon has. But Ash can tell from its snow from its snow white cloak, it has to be some type of ice type. Okay, well that's fine. As Ash has a few moves uh, to do that, but still, he had this move in his back pocket, so he's ready for it. He Ash would tell Primeape to get ready, but as Primeape was get re would get ready, Primeape would actually start to get, start to get winded, and started to slow down because it's tired. Dealing with two elite four like Pokemon back to back. Isn't exactly an easy feat now. It's very difficult. Especially with all the dodging and moving it had to do. But Ash would tell Primeape to hang on. That they need to end this in one move. To be ready for her last Pokemon. But Lorelai would just give an ice cold glare. As Ash would call for a fire punch. As immediately Primeape would try to run up. And immediately Lorelai would call for a dazzling gleam. Hitting Primeape for very bad super effective damage. And then, Lorelai would call for a blizzard, hitting Primeape yet again, but Ash's Primeape would still try to hold on, but, but sadly, it's not enough, because one final Dazzling Gleam was enough to knock out Primeape entirely. It was just too tired and too winded to keep going. As Ash uh, would recall Primeape, telling Primeape that it did a, an amazing job to last this long, and, and thanks it for, uh, for its hard work. This is where things are going to get tough, tough now. Oh, man. 
Okay. Well, that's that's just fine. As of now, Ash will recall back and throw out his previous Pokemon. Flareon! L All right. <clears throat> just a little more. Hang in there, Flareon! I choose you! Okay. As the Pokemon would hit the... Hit the, the battlefield. Lorelai was waiting for this here. But Ash knew. Okay. It used Dazzling Gleam, which is a Fairy-type move. Ice and Fairy? Or is it regular Ice-type? Man, I don't know. But Ice and Fairy. Huh. Fairy moves can't really can't do much to, to a Fire-type like Flareon. Alright. With that being said, Flareon was ready for it. Ash will call for it. For a quick attack. For a quick attack to move around yet again. As Flareon would immediately start blitzing the battlefield. And immediately, Ash would immediately call for the Fire Blast special. Where Flareon would be running around so fast, it's shooting Fire Blast from different angles. But Ninetales was nimble. Lorelai would tell Ninetales to jump up. But Ash was waiting for it, as Flareon was, was above it, waiting. Like, Ninetales, look out! Now Flareon, use Iron Tail! As Flareon was ready for it, and it used his tail to hit... Nine tails directly back down into the valley of fire blast the fire blast special Let me see if you guys can uh, figure out where that reference is from And he, getting hit with multiple fire blasts on different accounts is actually very good because nine tails was hurt very badly Almost knocked out but Ash wanted to end it once and for all and but so did Lorelai Lorelai told um, Ninetales to go for a sheer cold. And Lorelai immediately sh Wait, Lorelai's Ninetales immediately shot off a blizzard so intense that it would be sure to knock out a Flareon. Uh-oh. Ash knew that it, this had to be it. A Fire Blast was not going to cut it. So he called the Flareon and told it to use Flare Blitz at full power. So Flareon. And Ash told it to use Quick Attack to get a running start. Flareon using Quick Attack to boost its speed and finally unleashing the fire that's so hot it burns even hotter, melting the ground in its, in its wake. Running so fast that getting hit dead on with the sheer cold is nothing to it. With it powering directly through, Ash says nothing will put out our flames. As he screams, as even Flareon eyes themselves start to light on fire, charging right through the sheer cold Suffering recoil damage, hitting Ninetales dead on for critical hit damage, knocking it out. <clears throat> but sadly enough, that was enough to do Flareon in, as suffering too much damage and pushing itself too hard, led it to be a double KO. Ash recalled Flareon, telling it it did an amazing job and thanking it for its efforts, but let them finish it now. <clears throat> Ash st still has three Pokemon left, I mind you. But... Oh, man. Here we go. Lorelai is on her last Pokemon here. She claps for Ash. Well done. Very, very well done. I'm surprised that you were able to make it this far. But don't get cocky, because this is her strongest Pokemon. As she throws out her Lapras. But Ash had a, uh, thankfully had a plan for all of this. Alakazam, I choose you! And Lorelai would be interested in Alakazam. Why? And Ash would immediately start using his, his setup strategies. As he knew exactly what Alakazam was for. And Alakazam knew what it was for as well. It wasn't really to try to win the battle. But it was, going, it was trying to win uh, Lapras. So Ash would immediately set up. Using light screen and reflect right then and there. And also using barrier. What? Now, uh, Lorelai would be on attacking Alakazam, but Ash's fourth move would be Recover. Ash would, Ash would be dragging this battle out as long as possible. Now, yes, Al could he have used Alakazam to fight? Yes, he, yes, he could have. But there was a reason he did this here. He needed to wind um, Lapras as much as possible to hinder it. And so dragging out this battle for the long run, Light Screen... Reflect and barrier and recover. Yeah, Lorelai was gonna was getting very annoyed that Ash was dragging out the battle as long as long as he did. Why not just use Alakazam to attack? Because Ash was already using its four moves. Yeah, guys, I went back to using four moves. Cause if the Pokemon anime is gonna do it and the games are doing it, I I should I need to stick by with myself. 
So Lorelai, this battle was dragged on for the longest time until Alakazam did eventually go down. Not, but not without putting up its last its last three moves in Reflect, uh, Light Screen, and Barrier once again. This did make Lapras extremely tired, though, because using move after move to try to defeat it. <laughs> but that's all the that. But Ash was using using Alakazam as cover, because his final Pokemon was that of a legendary bird. Moltres, I choose you. As Astra Moltres. You have a, 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 a kind of tired Lapras at here. And Lorelai knew exactly what Ash did that for. Now his plan's coming into fruition. A legendary bird. Not only that, he tired out her Lapras. This was Ash's plan all along. Because she knew her last Pokemon would be Lapras. So Ash came in with the fact he needed to literally pressure Lorelai. But because that Lapras was way too dang bulky to take down with just pure raw power alone, he had to drag it out to make it tired. So, with, by, doing that, by using Alakazam's pivoting strategies to do that, he was able to capitalize on it. Nice. So, let's get this show on the road. Literally one Fire Blast was all it took to knock out Lapras. Lapras was just way too exhausted and couldn't put up much of a fight. Sure. It, uh, Lorelai used Hydro Pump to uh, try to com combat the Fire Blast, but it was just too weak from all the work it put in to take down Alakazam. So, sadly, Lapras was taken out, and Ash won the first Elite Four battle. Nice. Lorelai congratulates Ash, but saying, remember, she was only the first. Ash still has a lot more to go through. Ash would say he knows, but he hey, he's ready for it. <laughs> I hope you are. As now, time for the next one. Bruno. Oh, man. Now I gotta get his team. I'll be right back, guys. Give me one second. Next would be Bruno. Oh, here we go. As Bruno would introduce himself to Ash. <clears throat> Bruno would tell Ash, even though he may be the brute of the Pokemon League, that doesn't mean he will go down just like any other brute. His Pokemon are powerful and sturdy. He's trained them up himself. And he better believe that they're going to give Ash the fight of a lifetime. Ash would say he expects nothing less from a powerful person like Bruno. He's seen from all his recorded matches how Bruno is extremely strong. But he came prepared just for moments like this. Well, let's see if you can win. Yeah. As immediately they would, walk to, they would shake hands and walk to their other side. As Bruno would sit down. And Ash... We'll be waiting for it as they would both hold up their Pokeballs. Ready? Begin! <sighs> and now they would throw out their Pokemon. <laughs> Hypno! I choose you! As immediately. Uh, I'm gonna see. Which one should I throw out for Bruno? Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five. And wait, where is he? Okay. Ah, I got it. Immediately, Bruno would throw out his Primeape. Primeape, let's go. Now, keep in mind, guys, okay, this battle's gonna be kind of uh, underwhelming because uh, Ash is about to sweep through Bruno with little to no, for no force as he or originally thought. That's because Bruno's team is kind of uh, underwhelming in Kanto. Even though I tried to spike it up a bit more, Ash won't really struggle that much against Bruno. But the next two, he's gonna struggle against immensely. But, hell, let's go. Immediately as the battle starts, Bruno would tell Primeape to go and, uh... Ooh, to go and use Thunder Punch. But immediately, Ash would start off the battle by using Psychics left and right. And, ooh, man. It's like, okay, if you thought Jinx's, uh, Lorelei, Lorelei's Jinxes was sandsing you, you might as well think that this is endgame sands, like, whenever you dodge all the Gaster Blasters, because it's throwing, it's throwing... Primeape around like a rag doll, literally. And finally crashing Primeape down into the uh, uh, battlefield, Ash immediately uh, used, uh, wait, okay, Hypno's uh, move, Hypno's uh, greatest move, which is uh, Hypnosis, yeah. Hypno uses Hypnosis and puts Primeape to sleep. And then uses Dream Eater. Oof, knocking Primeape completely out. Yep. Like I said, this is about to be a pushover really, really quickly. Bruno being upset at this a little bit 
would immediately send out his next Pokemon, a uh, Poliwrath. Up oh, here we go. Ash would recall Hypno and send in another one of his legendary birds, Articuno. I choose you. As Poliwrath and Articuno would hit the battlefield, Ash would already know what to do. Wow. Poly, okay, Poliwrath, since Poliwrath can't use Thunder Punch or Fire Punch, it has to use other type of moves. But when Poliwrath would try to come and use a, uh, thing, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, would use Waterfall to try to get a flinch off. Ash would immediately call for the move Freeze Dry. Yep. Articuno, use Freeze Dry. And immediately, it's super effective on water types. So, uh, yeah, Poliwrath immediately gets dog walked by Articuno. And then another freeze dry later, Polyrath is down and out. Yeah, like I said, total pushover. This is about to be very easy. That's two already down. Oof! This is about to get this is about to be sad. Now, here comes the, the next few Pokemon that are about to be done that are about to be done in. As okay. <laughs> Right, uh, Bruno's kind of getting upset because he's being easily washed over. But you guys are about to see the rest of Ash's Pokemon as he throws out his Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee, time for action! As Hitmonlee would hit the ground, Ash would recall Articuno immediately and, and throw out his next Pokemon. Muck, I choose you! Even though Ash never freaking battled with Muck, I really thought he should have because Muck is an extremely useful Pokemon. Especially since what he's about to do right now. Oh, wait. No, wait, no, dang it. Sorry, threw out the wrong Pokemon. Sorry, wrong Pokemon, wrong Pokemon. Switch, switch, switch. Instead of Muck, uh, he sent out Gyarados. I choose you. But keep in mind, it's not a red Gyarados. It's a golden Gyarados. Boom. As his golden Gyarados would touch the ground. And I don't know what you guys are going to say. What? Shiny Gyarados is, is red, not golden. But if you go back and watch my, uh, I think it was part two or part three one of those parts i know was either part two or part three then I'll, it'll explain why garrett why ash's gyarados is gold instead of red and also i really do think it's a wasted opportunity to not make gyarados shiny golden i don't know why they didn't do it at all but oh well anyway with this being said <laughs> you guys already know what's gonna go on when hitmonlee goes up for a uh trip for a mega kick now that would have done something. Gyarados, uh, Ash tells Gyarados to wrap Hitmonlee up, up in its body, and so it does. And what Gyarados does next is going to be diabolical. It uses Dragon Pulse to shoot it back down, and immediately goes and uses her and uses Hurricane. And woo, Hitmonlee getting wrapped up in the Hurricane. I know Hurricane is a very low hitting move, but thankfully Ash managed to land it. Ash had managed to land it, and Hitmonlee was knocked out just like that. Man, yeah, Bruno's being a complete pushover right here, and Ash thought this was going to be a lot harder. But still, he's locked in right now. He's way too focused to lose. And now it's time for the next Hitmon, and now Ash would recall back Gyarados and send in Muck. Muck, I choose you! Let's go, Hitmonchan! Hitmonchan and Muck. Now, Muck is severely underrated as an Ash Pokemon. I'm going to continue the rant like I did before. Muck is severely underrated, even though Muck only had probably like two battles. It's severely underrated, and I'm going to show why. As now, Hitmonchan runs up and tries to use a Fire Punch in one hand and Thunder Punch in the other. But crazy enough, Muck's Ash is about to use this strategy, and he's about to make you guys so bad, so mad. Ash just uses Minimize over and over and over again. The Minimizing Muck, I swear to God. And with Muck's malleable body... Even though some hits Hitmonchan is able to actually land, it can't really uh, get to Muck's hurt Muck that bad. And what Ash is about to do is diabolical. He uses a gunk shot and shoots directly in Hitmonchan's face. And when Hitmonchan is poisoned badly by the uh, trash that was spouted right in his face, Ash told Muck to encase Hitmonchan in its body. Muck opening its mouth and literally um, e almost eating Hitmonchan. It's stuck inside of its poison body, and Ash told Muck to use a uh, corrosive acid. I think that's what it was. I don't know, something like that. And literally, or minimize yet again. And uh, Muck shrank with Hitmonchan in its poison body and spat it back out, and Hitmonchan was knocked out. 
Basically the bell sprout situation of what Muck just did. That's already four down, bro. Now, Muck was getting annoyed here. Wait, no. Bruno was getting straight up annoyed because his Pokemon were being disrespected. So he sent in his fifth Pokemon because you know who his last one is. He sent in Tauros. Let's, it's time for action. And Ash recalled his Muck to send in Pidgeot. Take to the skies. As now Pidgeot takes to the skies. Oh, crap. Here it comes. Now, Tauros can't really use any ground type moves at, to really hurt Pidgeot because, ha, thankfully, that's a good thing. But here we go. Ash had a plan for this. Immediately, he starts off by P having Pidgeot use Heat Wave. And, the, and with one major flap of its wings, a Heat Wave comes at Tauros. But Tauros' ability Intimidate uh, lowered its attack. But hey, that's fine because... Pidgeot don't really have, well, it only has one major attacking move, but that's fine. But its keen eye ability prevents it from being lowered. Oh, wait, no. Big Pecs, I mean. Sorry. Big Pecs. Prevents anything from being lowered. So, ha. It doesn't even matter. So, here it comes. Tauros was hit with the Heat Wave, and Ash keeps using Heat Wave over and over again. Until Tauros is finally burned, which is good. Which is what he wanted. And then he starts rushing in by... Uh, by telling Pidgeot to now use Twister, which is a dragon type move. And Bruno uh, is having Tauros use Wild Charge to try to hit Pidgeot, but Pidgeot's too fast and he keeps dodging Tauros. Like, woo, dang. Like, oh wow, now that's very nut. Now, Ash keeps Pidgeot high in the air to make sure Tauros can't actually reach it. But Ash comes down for one move though, and, and when Tauros finally gets a Wild Charge again, Ash has Pidgeot dodge and use Steel Wing directly on Tauros' back. Literally hitting the bull directly uh, in the spine. Ca causing, a, causing it to hit the ground very hard and causing Tauros to be knocked out. I know what you guys are going to say, but isn't Tauros like a bulky Pokemon? Yes, it is. But at the same time, the burns and, the, and uh, obviously the recoil from the wild charge and everything. Yeah, Bruno was playing a dangerous game here. But now it's time for his final Pokemon, which you guys should know already is, you know, Machamp. So let's just get this done already. Machamp hits the battlefield. And, oh boy, here we go. Ash is, just says he's going to end this right now. Where Bruno dares him if he, if he can. And here we go. Ash told Pidgeot to use a full-blown sky attack. And... Pidgeot takes to the skies and the bright sunlight to bask in it. And Bruno tells Machamp, here it comes. And, it and Bruno tells Machamp to, ch to, ch uh, to channel four power up, to, ch to channel blah, 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 four thunder punches in all of its arms and hands. And to be ready for it. And now it's going to end this once and for all. And immediately, Pidgeot's diving down with the tenacity of, like, a Brave Bird. But it's not using Brave Bird. Instead, it's rushing at Machamp with so much power in Sky Attack. And Machamp clasps all four fists together to uh, ram into Pidgeot with all four Thunder Punches to push back. Now, Machamp is intensely strong. And, woo! Pidgeot, Pidgeot's ability, thankfully... Its ability is speed boost, so it's gonna it it's gotten even faster and faster. But still, rushing at Machamp like this was a pretty gutsy move. But heck, Ash believes in his Pokemon. Go, Pidgeot! Stand your ground, Machamp! As the two Pokemon keep clashing. But Ash knows his father's watching in the stadium. He won't lose here. So Ash br brings his fist back and drives it forward. And then it fades into Pidgeot, opening its eyes. And pushing forward even more. Causing Machamp to lose its ground. What? And then Pidgeot, breaking through all the thunder punches. Hitting Machamp, dead in the chest. With the sky attack. At full power, the golden energy enveloping Pidgeot goes farther and farther and farther. Pushing Machamp and knocking it back so far. He gets slammed directly into Bruno, with Bruno catching Machamp, but Machamp has been knocked out, defeated. Ash wins the next exchange.
That's now time for the third Elite Four member. Guys, we're getting close here. Okay. Now, here's where the controversy is going to come in, guys. Because with Agatha, she is a very interesting case. I don't really know if she's a poison type trainer or a ghost type. But you know what? I'm just gonna have to say F it and and split it and be split in between. So half ghost type, half poison type. That's that's my best bet, and that's what we're gonna have to go with. So sorry guys, that's what we're gonna stick with. So let's go. Here we go with Agatha. Now, crazy enough, Ash could barely find anything on Agatha. But he but what Professor Oak managed to tell her that she was half poison, half ghost? So Ash got to prepare for his team for that a little bit, but... Uh, <coughs> sorry about that, guys. Hold on. One more. <coughs> okay, there we go. I'm good now. I'm sorry. Bless me. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so Agatha, what Professor Oak was barely able to tell him, she was half ghost, half poison, but Ash could barely find any recorded matches on her because not many people make it to Agatha, and the ones that do get obliterated very, very quickly. Ash is going to struggle immensely with Agatha. Well, not as much as he would with the last guy, because, oh my god, it's going to be a nightmare. But still, here, here is where Ash is definitely going to have to be on his tip, on his tip, toe, on his tiptoes. Because he cannot afford to really miss a single step with Agatha, because she will poison the heck out of his team. So, when Agatha finally makes it to the stadium, she welcomes Ash and congratulates him for being able to make it this far. But she does apologize to him that his journey has to end so quickly. Because now she's going to have to put an end to it. But Ash just said he's, he's not going down at all without a fight. And if you believe, and if you think, uh, and if she thinks that for a second he'll go down easy, then she's even more mistaken than she thinks. Oh, that's a lot of bravado you got, a lot of bravado you got, young man. But can you back it up? Huh, you're about to see. As Agatha brings out a Pokeball, and so does Ash. As the battle begins, Agatha begins by throwing out Arbok. Let's get to, to action. Tauros, I choose you! Here we go. The battle now begins. Arbok uses its Intimidate ability, but Tauros' Anger Point... Uh, Tauros also has inti uh, intimi Intimidate, so they both bring each other's attack power down. But still, Tauros gets angry, and and basically, uh, like his four hooves stomp into the goddamn uh four legs stomp into the uh, battlefield, causing his attack to go back up because of its anger point. Tauros is ready to go. That's right. Show that we are here. We're ready, Tauros, aren't we? As Tauros would would moo would moo out loud. Well then, you seem to be you seem to be itching for a fight. Yeah, we'll show you. Tauros, use Earthquake! And immediately, Tauros would stomp its forelegs into the ground with such ferocity that the entire battlefield would be would shake violently, almost, the, almost shaking the stadium itself. As Tauros would put so much power into it, doing super effective damage to Arbok. As Agatha would be impressed by that, and Ash would show her that it's, this is only the beginning. Watch! Tauros, go and use Horn Attack as immediately... Wait, hold on. Uh, Horn Attack, is that the best that we've got? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know what? Nah, screw it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this anyway. Tauros, use Raging Bull! And immediately once that would, that would go down, Tauros would get instantly angry and start... Wail and start like it's almost like it's trying to bu it's bucking Arbok straight in the face, like ra like raging and crashing out, trying to stomp Arbok and cause as much damage as possible. Agatha's very surprised by this, but instead immediately wraps up Tauros uh, with uh, with Arbok's body. But Tor but Ash would say, "Don't give in, Tauros. R use Raging Bull again. Knock Arbok right off of you." And Tauros would immediately start going wild would start frailing wildly. But Arbok would have a tight grip on its body. But Ash would to tell Tauros to go completely berserk and use Outrage. 
and immediately Toro's eyes would light up red as immediately it would start crashing out, literally. Running into walls and stuff. Like, hitting Arbok and its own body into the walls of the stadium. Even into the ground of just straight running its own head there. Agatha can't believe the tenacity and just the absolute insanity this Tauros is willing to go through. And eventually, you know, Arbok has to let go. But Agatha uses, uses poison gas uh, on on Toro, uh, uses poison gas to inhibit Tauros to make sure it'll fe definitely feel uh, winded after this match is over. Oh, one sec, guys. Uh, sorry, guys, I just got a notification on something. Well, that, was, that wasn't really important. But anyway, on that situation, Arbok did get knocked out because of their one last earthquake. And she claps because n pretty much everyone's entire team gets swooped by, gets sweeped by Arbok. But this next team member, Ash really isn't going to have an answer for. As now, she sends in her Crobat. And because of Agatha's plan, Ash's Tauros really is feeling it now. The poison has already uh, run run its course through its body, and it's only a matter of time now before Tauros gets knocked out. And Ash knows this. Great. The one thing he wanted to avoid, Agatha's poison, is now hurting his Pokemon. But hey, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <sighs> let's do let's do this. As Agatha basically uses cross comes in to use cross poison, Ash saw this as his chance. He needed to do this now. He told Tauros to now. Uh, well, thanks to the thanks to the confusion because of fatigue, Ash told Toros to break through and use Wild Charge. Crobat comes in for the Cross Poison, and this is when Toros rushed that Crobat for the Wild Charge. Because it's an Electric type move, it does massive damage to Crobat, but the Cross Poison it still hurt it pretty badly. So now all Agatha had to do was just wait it out, and eventually Toros does collapse due to the poison damage, and Ash calls it back. Thank you, Tauros. You did you did what we needed you to do. Oh, man. Okay, now this is going to get even rougher than before. Because now Ash has to deal with that Crobat. And Ash knows from from uh, Oak telling him from, from, from my experience, Ash, you need to get rid of that Crobat as fast as possible. Well, of her bat. Because that thing will poison you, and it's so, so fast. Well, Ash said, well, thankfully, he also brought a flyer with him to contend with that Crobat. As he winds back and throws out his, his old fossilized Pokemon. Aerodactyl, I choose you!